Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. A quick little sort of bonus video today while we've still got the Socket 7 test rig on the bench and it's about this sort of mystery CPU. Well I mean it's a mystery to me at any rate. Um, you know, exactly what is this thing? Um, I've had this CPU as long as I can remember and yet I'm almost certain that I've never delidded um, any CPUs of this sort of age. Um, you know, certainly none of my original CPUs, I've, ever, I've never delidded any of them, you know, be it deliberately or otherwise. And if I got this as a sort of part of a job lot type, you know, collection of CPUs that I bought at some point a long time back, I don't remember getting it. So it's just been kind of one of those things that's always been there, you know, in, in, in a box. Um, and I've not got a lid for it either is the thing. So whatever identifying markings were on that lid, uh, they're long gone. And so it leaves us with the task of trying to figure out what it is. So what do we know about this thing? Well, if we have a look on the back and sort of look at the layout and number of pins, this is almost certainly a Socket 7 CPU, hence having a look at it while we've got the test rig out. Now, if we look on the front, Look at the sort of colour of this ceramic or whatever it is, you know, the actual package is made out of and uh, the thickness of it. And if I can get the camera to focus. Nope, come on. There we go. This little number down here in the corner. This is, I think, an AMD K6 series CPU of some description. But... Is it a K6, K62, K63, one of the plus variants? What speed does it run at? I'm not sure. And so the only way we're going to find out is to mount this thing on the test rig and uh, you know see, see if we can get it working and sort of probe it that way. So I've had a look on Google, uh, sort of Google Images, looking for delidded K6 series uh, sort of pictures, and there aren't many out there to go on. Uh, you know, there's not loads and loads of pictures of these things without their heat spreaders on. From the few pictures that are out there, I think this is a K62, but I'm not certain on that. But I th at least sort of uh, as a K62, it gives us a sort of starting point of what voltages and whatnot to set the motherboard to, uh, where hopefully we'll be able to turn this thing on and it's not going to damage anything or break anything like that. Now one challenge this is going to pose is going to be getting a cooler onto this CPU to keep it cool. Um, even though these things didn't chuck out loads of heat, usually around 20 watts-ish maximum, we're still going to need one on there. Uh, without it, try and run it with that cooler on, it's just going to burn up straight away. Now if you think back to the uh, sort of original Athlons and Durons, they had, uh, you know, the, or the, certainly the socket-based ones anyway, they had the exposed die, just like this thing's now got, but they had the foam pads, uh, one in each corner, to try and stop you sort of rocking the cooler and damaging the uh, the actual edge of the die. Now, it wasn't common to see these things with uh, a little tiny bit chipped off a corner, and a lot of them still worked when that happened, but there were plenty of them that didn't. So uh, I don't think using the original cooler is going to be, or using the original clamp anyway, is going to be you know, feasible for this. We don't have any pads. We might not get the right clamping force because this is now lower down without a heat spreader on. So yeah, gonna have to have a little uh, a little think about that. But anyway, I'll get this on the rig. Um, I'll come up with some means of holding it and then we'll see what we get. So as you can see, we've got the heat sink uh, attached to the CPU. Now I appreciate this is not the prettiest solution, but it should do the job for for, uh, for what we need. Now, for the reasons that I just touched upon, I decided against using the metal spring clip that's uh, part of the uh, heat sink uh, to hold it on there. And instead, I've gone for this sort of big external F-clamp. Now underneath, I've got a block of plastic between the underside of the motherboard and the metal clamp so that uh, we're not going to get anything shorting out, but uh, we're making sure all the force is carried uh, you know, through the socket and through the motherboard. It's it's not clamped to the little test frame in any way. And then on the top, the reason I've gone for this sort of clamp is that I can get the um, 
the sort of contact point right above that uh, core, that die on the CPU, so that we're not trying to rock the cooler. But also, these sort of twisty ones, they give you really sort of fine control about how much uh, load, how much force you're putting into that. So it's the best I could come up with uh, in the sort of time frame, uh, you know, th th that we've got. Um, little fan, uh, just taking that off the top of the heatsink, put that to the side so it's kind of blowing straight through the fins. As I say, these aren't terribly hot running CPU, so that should uh, keep us cool for this test. I've got the standard uh, core and I.O. voltages on the motherboard for a K62. Bus speed is set to the default of 100. And in terms of multiplier, I've gone for 2.5, which should theoretically give us 250 megahertz. Now that wasn't the slowest K6. I could have gone for 200 on a multiplier of 2. I haven't done that. The reason is... Um, if this is a really slow K6 too, say it's a 200 megahertz model, at worst it's operating with a kind of very mild overclock which won't be uh, doing it any harm. But if this is a much faster K6 uh, 2 CPU, some of those faster models, they interpret the 2 times multiplier as a 6 times multiplier. So that would mean if this is one of those later ones, it would end up running, you know, at a minimum of 600 megahertz, which we really don't want given the kind of janky nature of the cooling setup. So, at worst, it's a, you know, very low model with a slight overclock, but it's probably a, a faster model with a, a, an underclock, and that kind of safer end is, is where we want to be for this test. But anyway, um, that's enough waffling on. Um, let's cross his fingers. We'll see if it works. I've genuinely got no idea if it does. And um, see what we get. Here we go. Oh. Straight away. K62, 250. Look at that. I was hammering delete key there, so we're probably going to end up in BIOS. Yes. Um... I'm genuinely shocked at that. That CPU has been rattling around in the bottom of the box for years without that heat, uh, heat spreader on, and it's actually still working. Let's see if I can keep that fan positioned a bit better. Ah, no, stay where you are. There we go. There's a little bit of heat coming through into the heat sink, so we've obviously got some sort of contact. Right, let's um, exit without saving and we'll get booted up into Windows. Okay, let's run CPU ID and see what it says about this. So, uh, yes, uh, as we thought, it is an AMD K62 um, and uh, da, 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 da. It's a 250 micron techno, um, you know, uh, node size, so uh, all the K62s were built on that size. And if we look here, we've got Family 5 Model 8 um, Stepping C. Um, I'm guessing that should normally say Stepping 12, which is C in hex. So um, those numbers coupled with this here where it says Revision CXT, uh, that suggests to me that this is from the sort of as uh, the later of the two core revisions of the K62, this one being the Chomper Extended uh, revision. Now they ran at anything from 200 megahertz all the way up to 550, I think it was off the top of my head. So um, it's, it doesn't help us narrow down the actual speed that this thing was uh, originally designed for. But yeah, uh, it does work and it's a K62 as we thought. Now, the only way I would find, or at least be able to have a guess at the speed of this, would just be to keep increasing the multiplier, see where it kind of tops out at, and then just back it back a little bit and sort of make an educated guess that way. Um, but, yeah, given that it actually works, I'm now sort of scratching my head wondering uh, what to actually do with this thing. Given it's a little bit sort of different now that it's been delidded, it'd be a shame perhaps not to actually do something with it. Maybe come up with a better way of 
holding um, a, a CPU cooler on there and then, I don't know, do we try and push it, try and overclock it, see what it can do? Um, if you'd like me to do that, drop me a comment down below and uh, I'll post a little follow-up video at some point in the future uh, where we kind of dig into this thing uh, a little bit more. But uh, yeah, uh, there we go. As I say, quick little bonus video. I'll be back uh, soon with the K62 versus K63 comparison and benchmark video. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to say I hope you've enjoyed watching this one. If you have, give us a thumbs up or a comment down below. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.